Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with another exhibition match. It's a match between Elwar and Flipsip on Desert Cliffs. So, Elwar, not as familiar with him. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's another name. I'm just gonna double check. I think that is an alias. Nope. No, it isn't. But Flipsip, we know. Flipsip, we've seen a lot of. Yeah, Elwar, I haven't seen so much of, so I'm not sure how he plays. I think. I think he might be in the tournament next week that I'm advertising. Tournament next week. Tournament next week. Tournament next Saturday. 1v1 tournament. It's in the morning for Europe and evening for Australia. And I'm not, I'm going to have to go to bed at 5 p.m. because I'm in North America, in the western side of North America. Anyway, because I'm naturally commentating. So, that aside, plug aside, back to the game. So, we are having. Like I said, okay, flips to pointing out that Hellwar is more of a team game player. Yeah, I think I might have seen him in a 2v2 tournament, maybe. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, Hellwar going for Amphib Plant, which is neat to see. Desert Cliffs is a pretty small map, so Amphib bots can work, especially now that ducks are considerably more useful. Although, Scallop actually is what he's going for. But given that ducks have had their cost reduced, they can work well on a map like this. While flips have going for tanks, which will work given the flat, si the flat shape of the map, however, the top area is going to be harder to defend. It's going to be Hellwar. If he builds metal extractors up here and up here, it's going to be tougher. Not impossible. The ramps are vehicle pathable, but it's going to be easier to keep it defended. Now, Duck's coming in. Duck and Scallop coming in for Hellwar. That's about it. Hellwar switching off of unit production into economy production, which is the right choice at this stage. Getting up um, next to Lotus as well. Does see the Kodachi. And the Duck not going to be able to kill the Kodachi in time. I think we'll burn to death. Yeah, it's going to burn to death. That duck... Oh, no, it doesn't! Just barely survives to get killed by a defender, which doesn't really do much, unfortunately. Yeah, so much for that. However, Scallop still up, so Scallop is fairly tough. And Lotus is up as well, so the Kodachi will get a shot in. Doesn't get the Metal Extractor. Gets blocked by the Solar Collectors, which is great for Hellworth. Exactly what Hellworth wants. Building more Scallops on top of that. Now... And they know they're going for tanks. Looks like Galveston's going to be the option. Yes, yeah, Galveston. Wow. That Kodachi isn't last long. Now there's a Metal Extractor and Riot Cannon. Flips his Riot Cannon Battle Gum. Another Scallop would have finished that. I just want to Scallops do cost 280 metal each, but still, that. That still does the trick. Bear in mind that Panthers cost 300 and Kodachi's cost 180. Scallops are worth it in this case. Although, admittedly, ducks, maybe later in the game, ducks are useful for harassment, but once the, with the Kodachi's in play, that's not going to happen. Ducks could be useful for harassment up here, but I don't think I don't think we're going to see ducks the rest of the game. I think it's going to be pure scallop, maybe grizzly or boy later on. But first off, it's going to be scallop. All scallop all the time. That's, that's what we're going to see. There we go. And we're going to see this. That is our unit of the day, is the Scallop. And no, I don't actually use unit of the day as a normal thing, for those of you not familiar with my stream, but today I will, and that unit is going to be the Scallop. That's what we're going to see this entire game. Actually, the unit of the day. In fact, there are days when that could have happened. This is not one of them. This is actually the first Amphib game I've casted today, and it's going to be the last game I cast today, so... No. But anyway, do have a Kodachi coming in once again. However, nice little... Hellwar, he knows his solar collector walls. And he is he is pulling a total clone here with these solar collector walls. They're working out very nicely. However, the Kodachi coming around the back, it will be able to get the metal extractor as it comes around the back. It's gonna take a bit of damage to do so, but the angle it's coming from is a vulnerable angle for that metal extractor. At the same time though, a couple scallops coming in and Panther going along the northwest to see if any expansions have been built up, and no, they have not. Hellwar still inside their starting valley, while Flipsip, on the other hand, has gone to the north, sorry, the southwest. Not getting attacked there, though, but Scallop's getting rid of that Kodachi. Flipsip's commander at level one. That will be vulnerable to the Scallops. Scallop getting hit by a defender, which softens them up a bit, but even with that, that defender's gonna go down right away. Or not even gonna go down right away. The, the Weller's the first target, then defender. Then the factory, which the factory is going to go down right away. Flips it, or sorry, Hellwar taking out the heavy tank factory. And there it goes. Destroys the factory. A couple more ducks in here to get rid of the panther. 
Doesn't quite succeed in their own, but still, the ducks are in here, so I was wrong. We do see ducks, actually, quite a few ducks, as ducks are now in Hellwar spamming now that they have enough scallops where they can go. Oh, heavy tank did not work in this instance. I think the Panthers weren't necessarily a terrible idea, but it's just scallops are really powerful. I mean, the amount of damage scallops deal, the sheer amount of damage they deal, that is, what is that? That's, okay, that's 26 by 9, so that is about 200 damage every shot. And they fire about once a second, it looked like. Yeah, their fire rate actually is 0.8 seconds. Once every 0.8 seconds. So yeah, that's, that is really powerful. They fire times every 4 seconds. So often they fire. And we have half a dozen ducks as well. Now that Hellwar has had some chance to build up in a rather secure way and put flips up on the back foot, giving Hellwar more of a chance to build up. Admittedly, Hellwar has to worry about some Kodachis coming in here, but even then, the Kodachi that came in this angle actually never really came in. Must have retreated because it's not here at all. And we do have a boy switch, boy scallop switch, but the duck trying to do what they can to harass while there's really not much to stop them. Getting, well, this will get rid of everything. This is just going to kill everything in Flipstip's base. Flipstip's going to lose, going to lose the metal extractor, going to, to lose his own ducks because, or their own ducks. Hellwars lost their own ducks because ducks have a tendency to friendly fire. Get rid of the mechs. Get rid of the solar collector, although admittedly the solar collector walls are helping the ducks survive. One of the few things keeping the ducks alive at this stage. However, they are going to go down to the Kodachi. I think that Kodachi, oh, or the Ducks is going to kill its partner in crime once again. Like I said, Ducks do not like each other. Ducks are assholes. And I mean in real life, actually. Duck, ducks are, don't, don't mess with Ducks. Like, the real, actual waterfall. Don't mess with them. Just general word of advice. Ducks are not your friends. These Ducks in particular are not each other's friends. Which is the one bit that's actually a bit of a buff in their damage reduction. Right? They do not deal as much damage as they have health. They used to deal 400 damage, they used to have 400 health, now with 340 health and 230 damage. I argue that was a buff because it stops them from one-shotting each other. As they would always do and makes using ducks and groups impossible. Now it just makes it mildly inconvenient, which is a massive improvement. Oh yeah, someone asking in the chat about what to build first. Okay. Here's your build order. You have your commander, you build your factory. You can plop it down, it doesn't matter what you build, though I suggest cloaky or shield if you aren't familiar with the game, or light vehicles if you're on a flat map, like Titan Duel or something like that. Light, Titan Duel or Red Comet, any of the Comet Catcher ma series of maps. Then, three metal extractors, then a couple solo collectors, defender, or a couple wind generators on a high map, then a defender or a lotus. Defender, more so if you're expecting cheese, lotus if you're expecting more of a sustained attack. If you're expecting cloaky butt, defender's usually safer. And then build more power. After that, just build more energy, build metal, build some workers. You want to build one raider, at least. Up to th three if you're going for moderate attack. Like, one just to scout out, two to go for a bit of a raid, three if you're going for a powerful raid. And then build a worker. Unless you have a lot of reclaim, in which case build the worker first. And then after that, just kind of alternate between worker and raider until the raiders... It becomes, it starts to become difficult to use the raiders. If you're starting out, you'll want to not you'll want to switch off into riot units fairly quickly because raider micro is really difficult to get at first. It's really powerful, and if you know how to do it, you can go radar or sorry, you can go raider the entire game. Which actually reminds me, radar after your first stag defense, before or after your first stag defense, build radar. Radar is invaluable in this game. It's it's absolutely priceless. Get radar. Unless you're really really good and have perfect game sense, just get radar. And then, yeah, so when you're building up, switch to riots and skirmishers. Once it becomes obvious that you're, basically when your raiders start start to lose fights in raiders in the raiding stage, or your raiders aren't really able to get in anywhere because of defenses, switch to riots and skirmishers. After that point, it's fairly fluid. I think about this game is, after the first minute or so, there isn't much of a build order. But anyway, that that's the basics. So back to the game. Hellwar is actually losing quite a few conches to a couple Panthers, having rebuilt the, metal, the heavy tank factory. Flipstep is getting back in here with the Banisher as well to get rid of the Scallops and boys. And the Banisher will do an awesome job, basically two-shotting the Scallops. And the Scallop is not at the speed to get to the Banisher. Flipstep's commander survives once again. However, the Banisher getting slowed down by the boys, and the boys can survive his attack. Though unfortunately, they are near enough to each other that the splash damage is a problem. 
Their current position should be good, though. One of them is going to go down, but the other one will survive long enough to kill off the Banisher and... Still, I'd say a, let's see, 780 compared to, yeah, okay, never mind, that was actually a net, very slight net positive for Hell War, very slight. However, Boy and Scalp coming in here as well, so for Amphib, Boy and Scalp is really powerful against stronger units. For raiding, Ducks are great, but heavy tanks, yeah, Boys and Scalps, doing the trick. So Flipstep is... Well, rebuilding a fair amount. Flipstep does have an economic advantage thanks to the expansions over to the southwest and southeast. Which Hellwar has not mirrored. Hellwar just now finally mirroring those expansions. This is kind of where it's showing how he's a team player. In team games, especially large team games, players, as far as I understand, don't really expand much beyond their first few metal extractors because there aren't enough spots. There aren't enough metal spots to expand to. Whereas in 1v1, of course, you have half the map. Well, you safely have about a third of the map. And then mid-game, once everything's all set up and you're kind of just consolidating your defenses, you're probably going to have about half the map if it's an even game. All right, Flipstep about to lose its commander here. Thanks to the slow effect of the boys, Flipstep's commander is going to go down and the Panthers trying to do what they can to save it. Flipstep loses their commander. And that will even out the economy. Or at least will help even out the economy. Flipstep still has a lot of reclaim to work with. And still has more metal extractors. So overall, Flipstep is still ahead with that. But regardless... The boy coming in here, the panther will stop them. Or, actually, no, the panther's gonna die. And the Kodachi, however, not gonna stop him either. In fact, that boy is still going there. That boy's. Boys are tough. They have 1250 health and. Actually, counts for a lot. Looks like it lasts a lot longer than 1250, but. No, it's only 1250. Does a great job, though, with the slow effect as well. It just stops things from really damaging them. Hellwar, however, now having gone for some expansion, going for defense. On top of this, really should be expanded over the northwest. Build, just get a conch here and expand over the northwest. And the northeast. And no conches being built yet. In fact, no workers at all. This is a pretty common rookie mistake. I make it all the time as well. It's it's a common mistake is to forget that you do want to build builders fairly often. You want to have builders on hand. You don't want to build them all the time. Unlike most Total Annihilation based games, you don't want to be building workers all the time necessarily. It you can use them if you do to, to assist build. But on low economy maps like this one, because, I mean, there's only, what? I think there's only about a dozen metal spots. There's only 18 metal spots in this map. So, it's not that worth it. I mean, it's sort of worth it, especially when Reclaim comes in. But yeah, remembering to build enough conches is kind of, or just workers in general, that's a bit tricky. That is hard to do, to remember to do that. Oftentimes people will just have it in their queue, which you have to make sure you are using them if you do that. You have to make sure that you're pushing them on the factory. That's a safe way of making sure you do have workers on hand all the time. However, Hell War, now it looks like going to get rid of, or they're going to get rid of the expansions over to the west. A lot of defenders are in place though, which is not, not at all surprising. That is something that's very common nowadays. However, the defender is not going to last long enough. Actually, it does last long enough to get rid of the scallops. The boys, however, are going to be able to get through this. Because they deal quite a lot of damage off of the slow. And they don't... They deal 150 damage every 1.8 seconds. So, I mean, not the highest DPS, but the slow effect, especially as support, is awesome. Now, Hell, we're going for some reclaim. And does have the conch for helping out, but not for expanding. Still, does have... Not enough metal. Okay, starting to excess metal. Getting enough metal in the bank that excessing could be a concern. Getting more conches, however, a couple more conches, which probably just be used to build, help build the factory. One of them should go to expand, build a couple more metal extractors. Because at this point, Flipstep does have more static economy. Doesn't have to rely on reclaim. Could use reclaim just to bolster economy, while Hell War is relying on reclaim just to remain even, which is a bit of a risky position to be in. Even though Flipstep is going for an attack. Which, if it fails, donates metal to Hell War. But this way, Hell War going the wrong way entirely. Does have, let's see, a couple scalp. It's a scalping boy. There's a conch behind as well, but that's not obviously a combat unit, so. Not going to be useful. The only worker that is at all combat ready is the welder, but that's the heavy tank. That is the heavy tank builder right here. The only worker that has the ability to shoot at all. But now that Flipstep does have stronger energy, they got overdrive. Or at least once, once Overdrive comes in. Actually, yeah, it does. There it is. There's Overdrive. About one and a half times so far in there, but we'll have to 
get more secure energy supply. Even then, though, Hellwar is commander, or their commander coming under attack. Metal Extractor under attack as well, and not much can easily be done other than running away. Hellwar needs to get out of here. Commander is going to be knocked down in a couple shots. Two banishes here. That will. That Hellwar's commander needs to run away. It needs to have run away about 10 seconds ago, actually. At this point, Flip is taking more and more of the map control. And Hellwar, unfortunately, has been losing too many units. Flip is just keeping their units alive while Hellwar's been losing all of them. And a Pillager up as well. I'm going to Pillager Reaper for Flipstip. While well, Hellwar is sticking to Boy Scallop, and I don't totally disagree with that. It just needs more of them to survive. That's the problem. They need to survive. Archer, I do disagree with, but didn't last long anyway. Needs more of them. Needs more metal extractors. Desperately needs more metal extractors. That's a huge thing that Hellwar has forgotten about, and I think it might be too late. Hellwar is trying to expand, but in risky areas of the map. The Pillager is going to get lucky at some point. Going to hit. And when it does, it's going to one-shot that metal extractor. It's going to get lucky, although admittedly not yet. In fact, nope. It, okay, now it doesn't matter if it gets lucky or not. The pillagers took care of that. Yeah, Hell War going for a grizzly the last-ditch effort. This might work, actually. The banishers are not that tough. However, it is going to take... How long is it going to take to build? Wait, where's the ETA on this? Okay, that's... Strange, I don't see an ETA. Normally there's a build ETA. Why is that not there? Okay, there we go. That was weird. Anyway, yeah, 45 seconds left before that's done. And that is not quick enough, I'm afraid. Even with all the metal energy being poured into this, still 30 seconds left. Banishers and Reapers... Okay, the Reaper's gonna finish this. The Banishers are really powerful, but don't have the health. So the Scallop and Boy can do something, but that Reaper? No, that Reaper's gonna finish it. The Grizzly would take three shots to kill it to begin with, and... I think, no, actually four shots, because it's 1,500 each. So Grizzly's gonna take about four or five shots to kill it, and the Banishers go down in two. One of them actually gonna go down in one, but it's not enough. Even going down in one isn't going to do it, and that Reaper coming in to finish things spots the Grizzly. 20 seconds left before it's done, and that Scallop actually is dealing enough damage. The, the Boy... Boy being targeted instead. Boy goes down first. The scallop doesn't have the speed to get catch up with the Reaper, even when the Reaper is slowed. So the Reaper safely escapes. Flips up just has all the map control, starting it's taking out everything that Hellwar had built up. Even has just Kodachi in the northeast, just to be sure. However, the Grizzly has been built, another one following up. Hellwar just trying to try to win with Grizzlies. That's all they've really got at this stage, which unfortunately has no support. Scallop and Boy trying to do what it can to get up this hill, which will eventually. Still the Patrilli get up the hill and take that hill back. But really, the safe expansions, Hellward did not go for any of the safe expansions. Didn't go for the northwest here. Didn't get all go for the northeast. Went for center, center west. I don't think went for center east. But yeah, I didn't go for any of the safe expansions. That was probably the biggest mistake Hellward made. Is just not taking money where it was free. And now Flipstep has all the economy. Especially once, just after destroying the Heavy Tank Factory the first time, that would have been a perfect time to expand. Absolute perfect time to expand. The Ducks weren't a terrible idea, but they didn't raid enough to be worth it. And now the Grizzly is in, and the Reaper... Gonna have to try to get rid of that. Taking a little bit of damage, but still it's gonna be three shots before it goes down. And that Reaper, by the way, does have a 640 damage shot. Which actually isn't enough to get rid of the Grizzly, but given the cost difference, it's 850 metal to 2000. That Grizzly has to kill three Reapers to pay for itself. Although, it is about to get one. That's the one. One down. Banshee up for a bit of a counterplay, but still. One down. And the Banishers on top of this. The Banishers are going to be what gets rid of the Grizzly. I mean, one of the Banishers... No, neither of the Banishers go down. Okay, one of them goes down thanks to the boy. But that Grizzly about to go down. And that boy finishes off the Banisher. But even with that, the Grizzly didn't even pay for itself. Or just, just barely paid for itself. Bearing in mind, though, that Flipstip is the one who can reclaim all that. No, Hellwar actually just donated metal, effectively. <sighs> if it was even, I'd say maybe, but it's not. Hellwar is on the back foot and has been for a while. And this is about to basically seal it, I think. Like, Flipstip moving in. Pretty much to seal it. The Pillager's coming in for extra support, which actually might turn to friendly fire if they're not careful. Nope, it's a pretty safe rolling barrage at this point. So, Hellwar is 
I mean, he's being forced back. The Reaper basically, once it gets, once it starts targeting this, oh, nice terraform. There is a welder, however, to counter this, but yeah, that was not a bad terraform. Hellwar pulls that Reaper into a hole just to buy some time, though I don't see how much time it's really going to buy, honestly. But yeah, at this point, Hellwar has not gone and dealt with this yet. Will pretty soon, I'm sure. Like, just even this out. Or level this off. Yeah, there we go. Leveling off, getting the Reaper back into the game. But still, that slowed things down. That bought a little bit of time for the next Grizzly, which admittedly isn't going to end up getting up that much quicker. But still, it's up! That Grizzly is up, and another Reaper might go down in the process, but then again, most of the base is going to go down in the process. And Scallops being switched back to Scallop. Sorry, Boys was being switched back to. But even with that, one Reaper might go down. Another Reaper in a hole. Hellwar pouring that into it. Another Terraform, which is not bad. But even then, the Grizzly, even with the pairs, is... Okay, able to get rid of one Reaper. But honestly, there's Pillagers on top of that. There's half a dozen Banshees coming in here. There's more Banishers and... Rather than Banishers, Panthers coming in. On top of this. And that second Grizzly goes down thanks to the Banshee, as is the Commander. And the Banshees are about to finish this off. And that's it, doesn't even matter. Hellwar throws in the towel. That was game. And that's gonna be it for me tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. Certainly interesting. Amp versus tank. You don't see that every day. You don't see it very often, actually. And Hellwar actually had that. He had a chance there, but unfortunately didn't switch to economy to really pull into late game consolidation. Unfortunately, stuck with trying to build too many units and didn't successfully raid with the ducks that they had. So flips have a nice comeback there. And that is game. Thank you all for watching. And have a good night, everyone.